I was doing case that press. I'm here with Ramiz Brahima, who returns to action on January 15th against Court McGee. How are you? Pretty good, my man. How are you feeling? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm, I'm happy to be talking with you again. Um, how, how are the holidays? Good. Eventful, man. It's uh, been a little hectic out here, you know, with, uh, I guess, the rise in COVID rates. So we've just been trying to be careful as much as possible with training, with uh, making sure that uh, we're trying to stay away from people as much as possible. Um, it just kind of sucks, you know, because usually the holidays, they always just have that big family feel and everything. So as of lately, they haven't been that way, understandably so. You know, if it wasn't for fighting, if it wasn't for a uh, mob crime fight, I wouldn't really care. But, you know, things are a little bit different. So, yeah, totally, totally. I, bro, once, I mean, if the world ever gets fucking back to normal, uh, there's going to be just gigantic party, like gigantic. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> gigantic family parties. <laughs> it's I, wild. So, man. I really do think so. <laughs> um, so you cornered to your teammates um, on, the, on the last card. Uh, unfortunately, they came up short. But I wanted to ask, like, do you enjoy coaching and, and cornering? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's it's definitely it's something that I do enjoy. I've done it before with Austin Lingo. I've cornered plenty and plenty of people before. Um, in UFC, Bellator, LFA, you name it. And um, I really enjoyed it. It's a lot. I think personally i would say it's a lot more nerve-wracking than going out there and fighting for myself because when i fight for myself i'm in control of a lot of things you know um but when i watch my teammates fight i'm not really in control of everything that they do because you know sometimes you could let the information out they might not listen to it and uh sometimes it could be costly you know and uh you you're you're having to call audibles a lot you're having to change things up because you know it's a fight anything could happen in there so it's definitely a lot more uh, nerve wracking, but it's it's something that I do enjoy a lot. You, you were taking after your uh, head coach, safe, and because I could, I I could hear you on the broadcast screaming at Diego, saying, don't, "Yeah, don't get into a firefight, don't get into a firefight." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, man, it's definitely it, it is a little nerve wracking, you know. And Diego does bring exciting fights, so that's the last thing that I wanted him to do was just uh, get into a crazy firefight, get into a crazy exchange. Um. And so we've talked about what it feels for you to lose, right? And, and, and you know, what's it feel to be back in the locker room? But what's it feel to be back in that locker room when a teammate has lost? Oh, man, you know, honestly, uh, it's hard either way. Um, it's, uh, you know, you, 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 I don't know, man. It, it sucks either way, to be honest, you know, either way you put it it just leaves a pit in your stomach, you know, and uh, it's really, really uncomfortable for either party for when I fight or for when they fight. Um, and it's like a, it's like a weird reality starts to kick in and it just sucks. I mean, I, I honestly think it just, it, it really is terrible both ways. And uh, I mean, I know it's a part of the sport and I know these things, they could happen to anybody on any given night, but it definitely does not take away from the fact that it really, really sucks. Before we talk about your fight, I, I did want you to reflect on your 2021. Um, weren't the most active, but you got your first win, right? You, yeah, you, you yeah. You win. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, definitely would have liked to be a lot more active, but I mean, you know, these things, they happen sometimes. Um, so, like I said, the only thing I can control is what I do. And uh, I know that every time I step into that octagon, I'm I'm always going to look to give an exciting performance. I'm always going to look for the finish. And uh, I'm, I'm always going to look to give the fans in the UFC what they want, you know. And uh, what they want is amazing fights and, and spectacular fights and, and finishes as well. So that's the only thing I can, uh, can control. But like I said, going into 2022, I definitely, uh, definitely would like to be active. And, um, you know, I know it starts January 15th. So get the ball rolling on that, get a win. And, uh my ultimate goal is to, to go four and over this year. Um, you're 17 days out. How are you feeling? I feel great, man. Um, wrapping up the last, this is like, uh, the last couple of hard days of, uh, hard sparring, hard strength and conditioning, everything like that. So just trying to balance out the rest and, uh, the training, the recovery, everything like that. So it's, I've been feeling phenomenal this whole training camp. And, um, like I said, it, it's good because I've got to be in training camp, not only for myself, but for other fighters like Jeff Neal, Diego, Alex Verono, Alonzo Menafield. 
and the list goes on. Who was your main sparring partner this camp? Oh man, it's 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 definitely changed up a little bit. I had Jeff, I had Alex Morono, um, and then a couple up and comers, uh, Zumar Archer. He's getting ready, I think, to fight on the 14th. I think the day before our fight for the UFC, he's going to fight for LFA here in Dallas. And then also Julius Holmes. He's also another big up-and-comer. Um, really good dude, man. Uh, fights at 70, 85. He's fought at 205 as well. Um, and just a lot of good work out of those guys, man. Monsters. The train monsters. <laughs> yeah. Murderers Row, man. That's what I got to go through every freaking Tuesday. Thursday, Monday night, man, you name it. I gotta, I gotta, that's the lineup I gotta go up against. God damn. <laughs> um, so, Port McGee, man, uh, a true OG, UFC vet, tough winner. When they come to you with that name as an opponent, what was your reaction? Excited, you know, honored, man, just uh, happy. Like I said, you know, um, these are the fights that when you get into the UFC, you you really do dream of you know and um he's he's just he's he's such a a well-known name and the thing is i know people i i, I might get flack for this but uh, he is well known to to to, to hardcores you know to hardcore mma fans like myself like i remember watching this guy win the ultimate fighter when i was in high school so a lot of people know the true the true ogs and the, and the true people of this game know who court mcgee is so when they offered me this fight i was super excited and like i said it's it's one of those fights that i go in there i handle business i'll get this win and it's it's a big name under my belt and like i said it's just something that is there to 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 help my resume and ultimately these are the fights that i'm going to look back on and reflect on at the end of my career and i'm going to be so happy that i took them you know every single fight that i've ever taken in my career is one that i could honestly reflect on and, and look back the wins the losses and and look back and just be happy about it you know because these are the fights these are the performances that i chase after you know so i was truly truly excited um and for me it's 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 a legend fight for me. You know, this guy truly is a legend. He's He's been doing this since before we had a Reebok deal. I mean, like, th this dude was fighting when I was in high school, when I was first started my MMA journey. So it's definitely something that's uh, amazing. But like I said, come January 15th, when we're standing across from each other, um, no disrespect, but it's just he's going to be my opponent. He's going to be my adversary, and I'm going to have to handle business in there. I don't want to sound like an elitist, but I feel like if you're if you're an MMA fan and you don't know who Core McGee is, you're not an MMA fan. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're 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 a fucking casual. That's what you are. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, you're just you're new to this sport, man. You just you you probably started off watching UFC maybe like during the quarantine or something like that, and then you think you know everybody. <laughs> but man, these are these are the dudes. Like like I said, man. I mean. I grew up watching and he has notable wins as well, you know, um, and he's just one of those dudes, man. He's, he's been there and he's, he's been through it. So if, if you know MMA, then, you know, Court McGee, just like, you know, you're going to know Kazushi Sakuraba, just like you're going to know Shogun Hua, just like you're going to know all of these true veterans in this sport. You're going to know them if you really know MMA. Yeah. And Court, Court McGee is a dog, bro. Like he's. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. He's. he's He's, you know, he 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 might have been on a losing streak, but I mean, look who he was losing against, and yeah. he, it is. That's what I'm is. saying, man. You got to factor all that stuff in, man. You got to really factor that stuff in. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on him as an opponent? Um, and I guess do you see this as the passing of the uh, passing of the guard kind of fight? You know, you're the new guy, he's the old guy. It's time to take the old guy out out in the back. You know what I'm saying? Well, for me, it's I, I look at every single opponent as I have to take them out. You know, it doesn't matter to me if if he's the OG of the game, if if he's a new, if he's a new guy, if he's a if he's an up and comer, if he's a highly touted prospect, whatever he is, every single body that I face against, I, I look with the intention to take them out, regardless to who they are, regardless to where their ranking is or whatever you whatever numbers game you look at or anything like that. Um, but do I look at it that way for this fight? Honestly, I look at it as in the way I have to go in there, handle business and take him out, just as I would any other opponent. You know, like I said, it's, it's respect before and after the fight, but during the fight, I got a job to do and, and I have to take him out. You know, I don't look at it 
as you know, I'm fighting the, the, a passing of the guard or a, a legend. Because like, if I let that stuff get to me in the fight, then the moment will be too big. You know what I mean? So I never let the moment get bigger than me. And uh, I just go in there and I enjoy every single second that I'm in there with him. How do you see the fight going? And do you have a prediction for this fight? I see it going many ways, man. Like I said, I always envision a finish. That's just who I am. Um, and I could see it going three rounds. I could see it going two rounds. I could see it going one round. Um, all in favor of myself. Like I said, uh, no disrespect to court. I have a lot of love for the dude, but come January 15th, when we get locked into the cage together, it's going to be a different story. And um, like I said, I just, any any possible outcome for me is, is going to be a win. So I'm going to go in there and just uh, take what's mine. Talk to hear. Um, now, uh, finally, looking into two, uh, 2022, um, you said that you would like to go 4-0. Um, what do you want your year to look like? Honestly, um, I would love to at least get two fights in uh, January and maybe February, March, just before uh, Ramadan, because I usually observe the, the month of Ramadan and uh, I take that month off. I'll still be training, um, still be taking care of stuff with clients, with everything like that. But of course, uh, I'm going to be limited to food and water. Um, so like I said, after that, I would love to get the ball rolling again. And uh, like I said, if I can get four fights, if I can get five fights, my, my whole goal this year is to try to stay as active as possible and uh, cap the year off undefeated, you know? Uh, like I said, I get four fights. I get four wins this year. That's going to be five and all. Uh, well, five and one in my uh, last six fights in the UFC. So I think it would definitely do big things for me. Like, it would definitely, definitely put me in, in, in a good spot, you know, like I, I said before, I'm not too crazy about rankings, you know, rankings don't bother me as long as you're doing your job, as long as you're winning and as long as you're going out there and you're putting on entertaining fights and you're taking people out, good things are going to happen to you. So, like I said, that, that's something that I'm not in control of is the numbers, the title picture, the this, the that. I mean, you have so many guys that are in the UFC that have some long ass win streaks and they're not going to fight for the title. So I don't, I don't usually bother myself about that stuff. Um, I just take it in stride and uh, I love my job. So I'm always going to fight. I'm always going to show up to fight. And that's what I have control over is what I do fight night. And then are you looking to get your, to keep your 100% finish rate going? On Man, 15th? listen, I'm, I'm in the UFC. I would love to do that because it would just make me a more exciting fighter. But I'm also aware that, uh, in the UFC, guys are really tough, you know, and you're not going to be able to finish everybody. But I think that the most important thing for me is as long as I'm getting the wins and I'm putting on very exciting performances, that's what I care about. You know, ultimately, I want to I want to be able to go in there and just finish every single body that I fight. You know, that's just just who I am. You know, I want to go in there and I have a, I have a kill, have a kill switch and I always engage it every time I fight. And um, it's never going to change until the end of my career. That's just who I am. and. Uh, if I can, I'll do it 100%. As long as the performances are exciting and I get a, I get the get the wins, that's all that matters to me. 100%. And then finally, this is the finally. When is Twitter going to fucking verify you? Oh, man, dude, I don't know. I mean, I see them verifying everybody left and right. That's something that I got to beef with, man. I think <laughs> people always ask me, like, oh, we, you know, how do you feel about, you know, rankings and this and this? I don't give a fuck about rankings, man. I just want to get verified on Twitter. That's all I care about, you know? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I don't know when they're going to verify me, man. Uh, I know that um, a couple of people from the UFC media, they told me that my uh, verification request was in progress. Um, I don't know what happened to it. Uh, it's been a little while. Maybe Twitter just forgot about me. Maybe they don't like the, maybe they don't like the stuff that I like or I follow or I uh, retweet. So who knows, man? Who knows? One day I'll be verified. One day. 2022 go. Yeah, 2022 go go, go four and zero in the UFC in 2022 and get verified on Twitter. <laughs> I made it <laughs> for sure, for sure. Thank you so much for your time, Ramirez. Um, oh, man, appreciate it, brother. Yeah, man. Of course. Uh, if you want to plug your social media, plug your sponsors, the floor is yours. All right, guys, just uh, follow me on uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, 170 Ramirez is my Twitter. Uh, Ramirez B170. Um, 
I don't know. If you get offended by stuff that I post, I'm sorry. I don't really care. You follow me, unfollow me. Don't matter to me.